All right, we're back, everyone. Working on this, the wiring for the last part of our quiet, cool 4700 CL 4700 full house. So we got our junction box here. We got the high-low off switch there, and then we got the timer switch right here. So. Plan is uh, box right about here. So I'm gonna try and locate a stud in here, ish. And uh, just I think we can. This fits in underneath the existing sheetrock, I think, and then we'll hold the box in there, I believe. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Try not to destroy too much sheetrock. So my hold on, we'll be right back. No, right, we're back. So we got this handy dandy stud finder, which usually doesn't work. But we'll see. Uh... Okay, scissors. Scissors, scissors right here. Okay, so we'll uh, use the tried and true method. Let's see. Yeah. Let's, uh, switch about this high. Yeah. Right about there. So my use a stud finder and then okay, there's actually appears to be a stud there. So then my method, which you're gonna have to patch these holes a little bit, but it's not much. So and I actually see what is the edge of that. Okay, so we didn't hit it there. Okay, so we're right on the edge, right about there. So, try not to damage the existing sheetrock too bad. But, uh, so we got these holes here. This one right here was right along the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and put our sheetrock knife in really close to that. Cut out a box. Hole for that. Hold on, we'll be right back with the sheetrock. Okay, so we're back with the handy dandy sheetrock saw here. So we're gonna plan to just go right along the stud there. <clears throat> Actually, we need to draw like a little template here, so we have to cut out too much, I think. So, uh, here, hold on a second. Alrighty, so my plan here is the box here, right about where that line should be. Put the level on there. Hoping that the stud is straight up and down. That would be nice. So I get that out of the way. And just trace kind of where this cutout should be. Okay, so that gives us a box to cut out right there. So, let me go ahead and do that. Hopefully, this will be right along the edge there. So, we'll just tap it in. Oh. 
Okay. So, as we can see, with my brilliant stud finding techniques, that we are right up against the stud right there. Shouldn't be any existing wires in this wall. There's no, there are no electrical outlets in this wall. There's no, 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 don't touch. Okay, yeah, you can have that. No electrical outlets, no wiring, um, no switches or anything in that wall. So I was fairly confident that uh, there weren't gonna be wires in there. To, for me to cut into so be sure that um, that's the case when you're doing your project so you don't want to electrocute it that'd be bad um, okay so there's our hole let's see if our box fits in there it's a tight fit there I might, I might need to cut a little bit more on the right hand side here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Perhaps I got the wrong box. I think uh, you can buy one for existing construction when you already have everything already there. I was planning on just slipping this part underneath the sheetrock, but I don't think that's gonna work actually. So, what I'm gonna do, just cut this tab off then it'll fit snug in there, and I'm gonna put a couple of screws um, into the stud inside the box. Just drill right through it and anchor it that way. Just like one high, one low. So if you have a, the same kind of problem, make sure you screw or cut your hole out right next to a to a stud. If you buy the wrong box, just kind of yeah, we're just gonna drill a couple holes in the side here. And just screw or nail a couple things in right in that stud and that'll hold the box nice and snug so we're going to go ahead and you know, cut this tab off and uh, do that and we'll be right back all right so yeah we cut the tab off it fits in there perfect so that's going to work out perfect so now i'm just going to go ahead and go up in the attic i'm not going to put the box in yet because i think it's going to be a pain um, I want to fish this, the wires down here first and pull them out and then I can put them in the box and then put the box in there then I can screw that in. Um, so yeah, if I put this in now, then fishing the wires is going to be a lot more difficult. So hold off on that, that works, that's going to fit perfect. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and go up in the attic now and uh, start working on the wire. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're in the attic, and uh, sorry if it's a little muffled with my mask on and there's an exhaust fan going. So, I measured from uh, from the um, intake um, six feet from there to my switch. So that gives me a kind of a reference point. So. I found the top plate here in the wall and uh, six feet away from that right there, the intake. And so here's the top plate right here. Just move the little bit of insulation back. Here's the top plate. Six feet is right about here. So I'm just going to drill a hole there and uh, then I can pass the wire down through there. Hmm. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I don't know if you guys need to see that or not. I'm going to go ahead and start. Yeah, sure, right about there. This wire is there a little bit. Move that just a bit. There we go. Well, fiddly be, folks. Looks like we are right on top of that stud. Looks like we hit right on top of that stud that we drilled into. That's what I'm thinking, anyway. 
Um, okay, so we're just gonna move it just a little bit more this to the to the right here and uh, peel back that insulation there. Probably should have done that. We we're really close anyway. Okay. Let's just try right here. See where we're see what we come up with it. Okay. <laughs> now I'm like that I drilled in like four inches. I'm pretty sure there's not two studs there. What in the world here? Okay, cool. I think what they did was they doubled up two by fours on this top plate. So it was drilling through like four inches. But I can see the light down through the hole, so we're good. I just wasn't expecting a doubled up two by four on the top there. So, okay, so we got our hole drilled and uh, I'm gonna get the wire ready. And I got the one wire coming from our power source over there. One wire coming from uh, um, the, the quiet pool fan. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just bring them over here. Make sure I got enough light because they're attached them to the, they're still in the big spools. And then I'll make sure I have enough light to get out the bottom there. I'll bring them together and then I'll um, press them down that hole there. So we'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're back. Um, so we got our, our lines right here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just feed them down this hole here. Hopefully, we'll be able to dump, come down the other side from underneath and be able to go ahead and pull them in. So, feed them in there. One. And I'm going to feed the wider one in there first. Okay. Got that one in there. And then I think I can feed this one in there. Maybe not. Okay. Nope. Looks like uh, I have two options. I can drill two holes. We'll just widen that one out a little bit while the drill bit back and forth. I think that's what I'm going to do because I don't need a whole lot of room. So we'll be right back. Alrighty. So that worked. Um, I just wallowed it out a little bit back and forth. Made the hole a tiny bit wider. And now I got both the wires um, running down in there. So I'm just going to feed them down a ways. And then uh, hopefully when I go downstairs there, I'll be able to uh, see them and uh, feed them into the box where I'm going to put the box there. Okay, so I think I got it down there far enough. We're gonna go ahead and go go down there and find out. We'll be right back. All right, so while I was I was able to get the wire out here, 
got me an extra long pieces just in case. Well, I dropped my drill bit um, down inside the wall while I was walling it out. It, my drill bit fell off down into the wall. So I got this long piece of wire or metal rod here, and I got like a 40 pound magnet here. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and get my drill bit if I can. Let's see here. Hopefully I won't lose this metal rod here. Just okay. I should come in contact with my drill bit. long enough. So I may have just lost a drill bit. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna let it go. They're only like a couple bucks anyway and then I don't think redoing the sheetrock down there is gonna be worth it. So anyway, that's an attempt to get my drill bit. Not really part of this demonstration here. So I'm gonna pull it out and we'll get back to the wiring. All right, so I just fed these wires to the box here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the box in there. And like I said, I think there's one for a box for already existing construction, but I think this is gonna work out pretty good. I'm just gonna push this in there. Tap it in there a little bit more. Secure the box, get it flush with the sheet off there, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I'm just um, taking the covering off about I don't know four inches up the line, exposing the wire so I can start wiring this. So I'm gonna do that to the other wire. We'll be right back. All right, so I just peeled back the wire there, about four inches on both of them, the covering. And I'm just going to go ahead and use these uh, wire strippers to uh, strip these back eh, about half an inch on each one there. So, just got the different uh, sizes and stuff there. This is a 12 wire, so just put it on there. It's a very handy tool. Strips the wire right off. See that? But strips the little covering right off of there. Definitely a must. Get one of these very into any wiring. And strip them with these wires a little bit. Yep. Okay, so we do that. Go ahead and do these other here and we'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see here, got these four wires here. And uh, according to the diagram, and the red wire is going to go to the top of the switch over here, and the black wire is going to go to the bottom over here. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp, or put a little hook in those wires with this uh, in the red and in the black here. Okay, so I put a little ring hook in each one of those and the red wire from the four goes to this here. If you guys can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just have that hooked around there and as I tighten that. There we 
we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and head and hook the black wire to the bottom part of that switch. And this is from the four wire feed coming in off the off the motor itself. So just have to bend this a little bit. Okay. bending it until you get it right with the part there and then just there we go got it in there make sure you push it tight against it and then go ahead and screw it down okay make sure they're tight okay so now I got the red wire from the four line, and the black wire from the four line, and that's how where those are supposed to go. Then uh, the ground is supposed to attach to the other two grounds, and then it's supposed to go into the ground wire on the other side, of the ground screw on the other side of this. Then uh, all the whites are supposed to go together along with the white wire on this switch. Um, the black wire from the power source is, which is a, this one right here. The black from the power source is supposed to be uh, wing nutted uh, with, the, with this on the timer switch. So. Go. go ahead and just tighten that together. There we go. So that's the black from the power source to the timer switch. Now the white from the timer switch is supposed to go in common with all the white wires. So all the white wires from, from the from the motor, fan motor itself, from the switch, and then to the power source, all the whites go together. So just kind of bend that to get it right there. I don't know if you can see all this. You gotta try and get all the whites together like this. Kind of twist them together. This. Okay. Twisting that down. Okay. A little bit of the wire is exposed on the back side there, so I'm just going to tape that with some white electrician's tape. We'll be right back. Oh, okay, so I went ahead and um, put some white electrician's tape on that. And then uh, the red wire from the switch here goes to the right, the left side of uh, the on-off. Red wire from the timer switch goes to the right side of this here. So I'm going to strip a little bit more wire off of this. Be right back. Okay, I stripped a little bit more off of that. I figured it'd be a little bit easier to get it crimped out of there and then put it around this here. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and screw that in. Okay, so now, there we go, <coughs> uh, 
and then um, pretty much what I'm thinking all the grounds go together somehow and they attach to the ground in the bottom of the switch here so if I can make that happen ground from this once again, I'm going to strip a little bit more off of this wire because it's a little bit not much to work with there. Hold on a second. Alright, so I hope you can see them the four wire here coming out. The red wire goes to the right side of the switch here. Black wire from the four wire comes to the bottom side, the right hand side of the switch, the on off switch, high low off switch. The white wire from the four wire connects to the white wire from the three wire, which connects to the white wire from the timer switch. And then all the grounds are going to attach, and then we'll attach them to the wire right here. So, um, not sure how to attach these exactly. Uh, I think we're just going to this round back here to that I think I'll attach this to this both of these up higher and then this will have the one run down to that okay so that's what we're gonna try I'm gonna go ahead and do that we'll be right back here okay so the green wire coming off of the timer switch here and then I had this ground and this ground from the four wire and the three wire. So I went ahead and wrapped the green and one and the three wire around the four. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect the one from the four to continue that. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook it and wrap it around there real quick here. There we go. This wire. It's a little bit harder to work with. Thicker, thicker gauge or whatever. There we go. There you go. So I'll just screw that in. Okay, so I believe I have all the wiring done on this end. Looks like it does in the picture. I'm going to just double check everything, make sure it's all good. And then we'll go uh, wire it to the power source. I'm going to wire it to the power source. That's why I've been so confident that uh, I'm not going to get electrocuted or shocked or whatever. Because there's no power yet. So I think I've got this though. Looks pretty solid. I'm going to go over the diagram one last time and we'll be right back. 